Hello everyone and welcome once again to another episode of Selling Greenville, the podcast all about real estate here in Greenville and the upstate of South Carolina. I am your host, Stan McCune, realtor here in Greenville, South Carolina. And as always, the housekeeping we always have to do here at the beginning, uh, you can find all of my contact information in the show notes, phone number, email address, it's all there. Reach out to me at any time. If you need a realtor, if you don't need a realtor, if you know someone that needs a realtor, I am your guy. I help everyone, buyers, sellers, investors, everything in between, anything dealing with real estate um, outside of Commercial, I do not do commercial, but anything dealing with land, residential, uh, mobile homes, anything like that, I can help you with. And uh, most of my listeners are repeat listeners. You can't guarantee that you will be uh, reminded on Facebook or reminded on Instagram or by email or whatever the case may be that I'm going to be publishing a new episode. So please go ahead and subscribe to this. Subscribe to the show, give us a rating, give us a review, make sure that uh, we get that feedback, that I get that feedback, that you're subscribed so that you don't miss any episodes. That would be a, uh, a true tra- tragedy. Um, I was trying to say travesty. I guess it would be a travesty as well. Um, that would be something that we definitely do not want to happen. We want to make sure everyone gets to hear every episode and hopefully all of this content is helpful uh, for everyone that's listening. Today we're going to be talking about smart home gadgets, and these have really, uh, really started to pick up the past, I would say, honestly, two years. We have really seen a major increase in the number of smart home gadgets, and I think there's a variety of reasons for that. Um, One is that some new home builders are starting to add them as part of new construction, maybe as an upgrade or maybe just as a standard option. Um, I have seen it kind of either way. And um, I think it's starting to become more of a mainstream type of thing. Um, And so different people have different uh, understandings of smart home gadgets Um, Some of these help the value of your home. Some of them just help uh, you in order to uh, better manage your home. Some of them help you in terms of keeping your costs of living down. Uh, And so these are very powerful tools that can help you in a variety of ways. And I have some experience with some smart home gadgets. I like technology. I like to, to experiment with different things. This is not going to be... Uh, an all-inclusive show talking about every single smart home gadget and breaking down and reviewing them. I'm simply going to take a 50,000-foot view of these home gadgets, what my perspective is on them, what experiences that I've had with them, and from there, you can do your own uh, research and, and look at what is out there and what the options are that are out there. So for starters, I would like to talk about the one that we are seeing, I think more so, at least for me, as I show houses that I see more often probably than any of the others, and that is the doorbell camera. So uh, these became really popularized with uh, Ring. Ring might be the most popular version of the doorbell camera, but there's a lot of other versions out there. I have the Vivint uh, security system at my primary residence. They have doorbell cameras with that. I believe Simply Safe, which is another cheap uh, security system that's Wi-Fi based. I think that they have. I'm sure they have doorbell cameras as well. There are all sorts of options for doorbell cameras out there, and we're starting to see. I mean, I, I don't know what the percentage would be, but it's it's starting to be particularly on homes that are like less than 20 years old. Let's say, I would say a decent percentage of them have these doorbell cameras, like maybe 20 percent. In some neighborhoods, it's a lot more than that. In my neighborhood where I live, uh, I would say probably 30 to 40% of the homes in this neighborhood have uh, doorbell cameras. And I have a very high opinion of these doorbell cameras. I think that they are great. Um, They are really practical. And here's why. Uh, it's it, They actually accomplish multiple different things for you, and they're not very expensive at all. 
here are the things that they accomplish. One is, uh, it's very simple, that it's tied to an app on your phone. When someone rings the camera, you autom- and rings the doorbell, you automatically get notified on your phone no matter where you are. And you can instantly pull up who that person is and uh, and communicate with them as well. There's a microphone in there. You can communicate with them directly. And it allows you to be able to see what's going on even when you're not home. Or maybe, you know, in my case, I have a large basement that I spend a lot of time in. That's where I am right now as I'm recording this. Um, you can be, you know, if someone rings my doorbell and I'm in the basement doing something, by the time I wrap up what I'm doing, run up the stairs, answer the door, um, it could be, you know, half a minute, maybe even longer than that, maybe 45 seconds. For a lot of people at that point, they're assuming that nobody is home. And so it may actually be quicker to just pull it up on the app. You hear that doorbell, you see who it is, you want to make sure that they don't leave or you want to give them some kind of instructions. You pull that up real quickly and you communicate with them and let them know, hey, I'm here or I'm coming or whatever the case may be. The other very practical thing is that um, is the security part of it, that they are actually uh, actively recording what is going on in front of your house. And um, for the way most of these cameras work, they're not tied directly necessarily to a DVR. They're not necessarily recording every single minute of every single day. Um, I'm sure that you can find some that will do that, that will uh, you know back that up to a DVR like a normal surveillance system. But what they typically are doing is they're typically going to be motion detected and they will record when there is motion. And then you can go back and you can see, you know, if if it picked up some type of activity, some type of motion, you can go back quite a ways and see, you know, okay, what was happening at that time? This came very uh, handy um, a few weeks ago. Well, I guess more like a few months ago. Um, we had a teenager that actually knocked over um, our mailbox while riding a bike. I don't know how that was possible. Um, I, somehow the teenager didn't get injured, but we got it all on camera. And it was funny, actually, because he was uh, there with his friend. And the first thing, they, you know, they, they are kind of standing around the mailbox trying to figure out what to do. And then you hear them say, oh, man, they've got a doorbell camera. Um, and so they knew there was no getting out of it and that provided some accountability. So, you know, the kid to his credit, he came up, um, he explained what happened. He took full ownership. Um, we didn't do anything about that. We just, I, I put my mailbox back together. Um, and you know, we did some digging. It was about an hour's worth of work total. And we, we got that sucker back in the ground, but, um, it, it provides a level of security that otherwise um, you might not have without a really expensive surveillance system. And it's really nice that, you know, the wiring and everything it, it from in most houses, it's right there. So it's very simple to install, but it provides for you a lot of, of different features. It really comes in handy. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm a big proponent. I think the doorbell camera um, has really revolutionized things. Um, and I should mention, I tell this to my buyer clients, but um, you need to be very wary as, as you're uh, talking outside of a home that you're looking at. Be very wary if they might have that doorbell camera because, again, it might, well, even if it's not recording you, the person on the other end of that, the person can be watching through the app. So, it records oftentimes when it detects motion, but at any time, someone can just look at the live feed and can hear what's going on. So if you're out there uh, in front of a doorbell camera discussing what you think about the house, there's a decent chance that the seller is listening to you, and uh, you need to be uh, aware of that. And that has been used against buyers in some instances, and, uh, and you know, if you can maybe show your hand a little bit too much or, or maybe say something disparaging about the house that might uh, come across as discriminatory, who knows what it could be. The main thing is you need to be careful. Look to see, you know, before you start talking. A lot of people like to, to discuss a house that they've looked at once they're outside of it, but you need to be very wary. There might be a doorbell camera and uh, you might, 
be just revealing everything you think about that house directly to the seller without any sort of filter. And uh, I do not recommend that. Even if you have great opinions of the house, um, you don't want to. You don't really want to reveal anything to the seller. Let your agent give feedback the way the agent knows is the best way to give feedback without insulting anyone, um, and also without tipping your hand if you might be in a situation where you might put an offer in later. All right, the next gadget um, that I have used uh, that I am uh, very bullish about is the smart thermostat. And uh, really, the, there are, again, several of these, but the most popular one is probably the Nest. Um, some of you may know the Nest thermostat is now um, controlled by Google. Google bought them out. And um, the other one would be the Ecobee, which is spelled kind of weird, but it's like eco, like eco-friendly, and then bee, like the animal, like the insect, bee, Ecobee. Those are the two main ones. And even though these are very similar uh, concepts, they operate very differently and they look very differently. Now, they both look very high tech. Um, oh, by the way, I, sh I should mention, let me, let me say one thing real quick, because this is important for you all here in Greenville. Um, Duke Energy, which provides the power to a lot of homes in the upstate, they have their own uh, smart thermostat and they uh, will give you one of those for free in order to, you know, they they can basically control some things remotely. I'm not going to get into all of that, but it gives them a little bit more control than you probably want them to. But at the end of the day, regardless of the control that you're surrendering by by allowing Duke to, to use a smart thermostat in your home that is one of their authorized thermostats, um, I do not recommend them from the standpoint of functionality. They are, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, not good. I would not recommend them. Um, if Duke offers you to, to upgrade your thermostat to, to one of their proprietary smart thermostats, I would recommend personally, just from my experience, that you uh, kindly say no and that you will keep your old dumb thermostat or you know whatever other thermostat you might have. Um, but I have had both, I, so I've had the normal dumb thermostat, which is not smart. I've had that Duke smart thermostat. I've had an Ecobee and I've had a Nest. Um, and as I was saying before, the Ecobee and the Nest are similar in some ways, but very different. The Ecobee, you, um, you really want to set up, uh, different schedules and, and you have to do this manually and it's not that, it's not a bad system. Um, it's a more of a touch screen interface, and it works quite well for what it does. Um, it really, the reason why I originally got the Ecobee was that it came with sensors, so room sensors. So um, I used to live in a tri-level home, and I mean, talk about the uh, pockets of the home that were hot or cold. I mean, tri-level homes are just a nightmare when you only have a single AC or a single furnace to keep the temperatures consistent, and we never had consistency. So, um, so we got the Ecobee thermostat that allowed us to have a few different sensors that we could place in different parts of the home, and that helped us to track the temperatures in the different parts of the home. And then it also has some, you know, unique features where you can either make that sensor your your primary sensor, and so you know, let's say you have your um, your AC set at seventy one. Um, you could have it to where it's based on whether or not the master bedroom is 71. Um, and then if it's not, then the AC will will kick on. Um, it can also, uh, the Ecobee uh, uh, sensors also um, will detect motion as well. So that's kind of neat. Um, so it, it, it does some smart things where it can kind of figure out what part of the house that you're in. Um what part of the house needs to be cooled, whether or not maybe it needs to go in, not vacation mode, but like uh, eco mode where it's not necessarily uh, heating or cooling the house because it doesn't detect any activity. Um, the Ecobee had an option where um, you could actually average all of the sensors in the home and it would uh, heat or cool the home based on the average of the sensors. And that was pretty neat. I really like the Ecobee. That's a great thermostat. Um, it, uh, it it got us a lot of use at our old home. 
Um, I will say probably my favorite out of all of them is the Nest thermostat. It's just simple. Um, it's it's you've seen them before, I'm sure. It's just like a, a round, very futuristic looking device that just has the temperature in in the middle, and you just turn it. You turn it right clockwise if you want to the temperature to go up. You turn it counterclockwise towards the left if you want the temperature to go down. And uh, what it does is is it's a they call it a smart learning thermostat because it will start to detect your patterns when you are turning it up or when you're turning it down, and then it will automatically do that in the future so that you don't have to keep doing that every time. If every night, you know, at 10 o'clock, you turn it down to, to 68 because you like to be cold at night, the thermostat pretty quickly will figure out that you're doing that. And then next next thing you know, you go to turn it down at 10 o'clock to 68, it's already down to 68 because the thermostat already figured out that that's what your pattern is. Um, my biggest complaint with the Nest has been that, because um, that's what I have currently at my, at my current house, uh, my biggest complaint um, is simply that sometimes that learning is uh, is a little bit clunky. Sometimes it wants to learn something that I don't want it to learn. Um, it may, um, you know, register something. And I'm, uh, you know, honestly, probably some of you are listening and you're just like, I know a workaround to this. There's, they have something in place to prevent this. I'm sure I don't know everything there is to know about the Nest. And probably there is some type of a workaround that if you just want to turn a temperature up or down just one time and you don't want it to be a setting, there's probably a way to do that. I do know that there is a way that you can go in and look at where all the all the temperature uh, settings are in the Nest app, and you can just delete them as as necessary or change them as necessary. So um, so you can manually do it as well if if you need to, and that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I have in my current home, I have an upstairs and a downstairs uh, Nest, so I have two different thermostats, and then I recently bought separately because it doesn't come with them, uh, temperature sensors for our different rooms. And it's not quite as flexible as the, um, as the Ecobee. I, I think the Ecobee sensors are definitely more advanced than the Nest sensors, but the Nest sensors work fine. Um, it's, it's a way that I can track temperatures in different rooms. You can, you can set, um, different temperature settings for those different rooms you I don't believe that you can average them like you can on the Ecobee which I think is kind of a cool feature that the Ecobee offers um I haven't been able to tell that they're motion detecting I don't believe that they're motion detecting um but uh, but they're useful I, I bought a pack of three of them for a hundred dollars so it's it's not that much but it allows you to be able to get more control and more data um, as to uh, what's happening in your house. You know, we believed that some of the bedrooms were uh, were hotter than it turns out that they actually are. Um, so sometimes your your perception doesn't meet with your reality when it comes to temperature. And that's something that we've learned with those sensors. And so um, I definitely think that they are useful. And again, with all these smart thermostats, you can control them remotely. Um, and one thing that's great about the, the, the doorbell camera and the smart thermostat, these are really useful, um, for your rentals as well. If you have rental properties, um, having that doorbell camera can, can help you to see, you know, if there's something going on, uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, having the smart thermostat, you know, maybe, um, if you're doing short-term rentals, you, you might be in a situation where you have, you know, a week where no one's on the property. And maybe the people before forgot to turn the, the temperature up, you know, during the, the summer um, so that it wasn't just cooling unnecessarily. Well, guess what? You just pull up your app and you just do it yourself. Um, or, you know, if the thermostat is programmed to detect if there's no motion that it automatically turns the temperature up. Um, that's another great uh, energy saving feature as well. So there's lots of cool things. The the Nest um, as well, one thing that I, I think is kind of neat is it tells me what my indoor humidity is. Um, so I really like that. Um, and they have a feature where you can actually expunge the humidity. Um, they do warn that uh, it uses quite a bit of power in order to do that. But um, 
there's a lot of different things. I mean, there are so many features. I'm sure I haven't even, um, you know, gotten anywhere close to fully maximizing the potential of those thermostats, but just even on the superficial level, they have been uh, very useful. Um, another thing, this is very different than the first two things, but this is something that that um, I recently have acquired, and I think it makes a really big difference, is a Wi-Fi extender or um, a mesh router. And, and there's a few different uh, a, a few different products out there that are very similar to this, but this is basically when you have a, a, a home where there are parts of the house that are not getting a great Wi-Fi signal, you can boost that Wi-Fi signal with a Wi-Fi extender or you know you might call it a mesh router, something like that. You can boost that signal and that way there are the parts of your house that typically are weak, may not be as weak anymore. So I recently put this downstairs. We've, we've got our um, Wi-Fi router in a corner of the upstairs, you know, living room. And well, we've got an entire, you know, we've got a, a basement, a finished basement that basically runs the entire length of our main house. And so uh, the, the Wi-Fi down here would sometimes get dicey and we'd run into situations where in our movie theater room, where we're trying to stream Netflix or whatever, sometimes we'd run into some buffering. I extended a, uh, a uh, sorry, I installed a Wi-Fi extender down here. Um, it's a Netgear, I'm looking at it right now, a Netgear dual band uh, Wi-Fi extender. I'm no expert on any of this stuff, but let me just say that um, the way it worked, it definitely, I have seen a major difference. Now, you don't necessarily see your speed increase um, because the way I understand that they work, it actually uses some of your bandwidth. So, so sorry, I, I, let me clarify that. You won't necessarily see an increase in your bandwidth uh, if you run some tests to, to, to do the speed tests, but you will see a difference in terms of the speed because now it's almost like you're closer to the signal. And that's exactly what I've experienced. Our technically our bandwidth seems like it's uh, it's a little bit lower if I run some different tests, but practically I have not run into a single buffering issue since I've extended that thing. And I used to run into buffering issues when on Zoom calls or or on Netflix or whatever quite frequently. That's not happening at all now. And uh, so that's a very basic thing that. Honestly, a lot of people, if you're in a big multi-level house where you have, um, you know, Wi-Fi in, in a corner of, of the house and not getting a good signal in another part of the house or maybe a big ranch, um, that's something that you should strongly consider. Another uh, product that I have used and have only dabbled a little bit in, but I like the idea and I like the potential of it is the uh, is smart outlets. So smart outlets are um, basically just what they sound like. All of these smart gadgets are things that are connected to the internet and that you can control with your phone in one way or another. And I guess the Wi-Fi extender wasn't technically a smart gadget, but it's kind of in the same class. Well, the smart outlets are very similar where they're basically, they're, there's a lot of different options out there, but on the most basic fundamental level, they just allow you to be able to control an outlet using your phone. So you might have something plugged in uh, into a smart outlet that you want to turn off and you wanna have the ability to just turn that off remotely. Those are great for that. So an, an example might be, you know, maybe you have a lamp um, that you uh, want to turn on. You know, you might, you get some action, for instance, on your doorbell camera um, and you're wondering, you know, hey, is it possible that something might be going on and, you know, that there might be someone snooping around my house? Well, guess what? If you've got a lamp plugged into a smart outlet, you can turn that lamp on, make someone on the outside think that there's someone inside the house. Um, you might have, you know, something plugged in. Uh, for instance, if you've got like teenagers at home, um, of course, they might be able to... to figure out workarounds, <laughs> of course. But um, if you have, you know, kids at home or whatever, 
and you want to shut off, you know, the TV or whatever from your phone remotely or whatever the case may be, you could do that if it were plugged into a smart outlet. They have outlets, they have little adapters that you can just plug straight into the outlet, or they have ones where it's the entire outlet itself that you can just replace. And for those of you that have never replaced an outlet before, um, it's, uh, I, I have to legally recommend you get an electrician to do that kind of stuff, but I'm not the handiest dude in the world, and I have been able to to replace outlets before. So um, go ahead and hire an electrician if you've never done it before. Um, but uh, also know that there are lots of YouTube videos and whatnot out there on, on how to do that um, if you decide to take your life into your own hands. <clears throat> Um, another thing that I think is uh, is really a game changer is the the smart lock, um, and these are things they they haven't gained as much traction yet uh, as you might expect, but it's not surprising when you really think about it. People don't like to change their locks. Like it doesn't honestly is not very hard, but it's just like you know you just get into the routine of you've got the key. You, you know, you always do the same thing every time you open and close your front door. But let me tell you, it is just like when, you know, for some of us, we uh, switched over to vehicles where you no longer have to, to, you know, put the key in the ignition. You just press the button uh, and it detects that you have the key in the car. That is the difference. And, and, and I am, as I'm recording this right now, my car is in the shop and I've got a loaner vehicle right now and the loaner is it's an it's a 2020 so it's nice but it's the base model and we have to put the key in the ignition and it when you are used to just pressing the button putting the key in the ignition feels like you know like a ton of work I know that sounds ridiculous but um but it really is one of those small things just being able to press the button that a small thing that adds a good deal of value and for your home where you're going in and out of the door so often, having a smart lock, one that you can control from your phone, but also that you can just put a code in at the door and never pull out a key, that it is really, really nice. That It is much more of a game changer, in my opinion, than it is for the car not having to, to put a key in the ignition. I love it. Um, I have all of my locks now like that. And again, if you're doing rentals, um, I've got um, a lock that actually integrates with Airbnb so that when new guests come onto or new guests um, uh, arrange for a stay with my property that's a short term rental, when they arrange that through Airbnb, it automatically synchronizes with my lock and sends them a proprietary code that only they will use that will only be active during their stay so that is that is super cool it just automatically as soon as they book it they get an email uh from the lock and uh i love that i think that that's a really neat feature i think that that really uh, you know helps the um the airbnb to stand out as well you know people they see that and they're like oh wow i've never gotten that the other airbnbs that i've stayed at um, and it makes them feel secure, right? Because, you know, there's not been keys handed out to other people. There's not the code that they're using isn't a code that other people have used. Um, and so I think that I think that that's really cool. Um, I'm a big fan of the smart lock. You know, you again, it's a similar kind of thing where, you know, let's say that someone uh, comes and, and visits your home. They arrive a little bit sooner than you're expecting them to and you need to let them in. You can... From your phone, wherever you are, unlock that door. That's a pretty sweet feature, and that's something that um, you know. I think that uh, once you once you get that, and once you go there, I don't really think that you can turn back from it. I don't see myself turning back from that. I think that that's going to be a long term fixture for me in in any future house that I move to. Um, Changing gears a little bit from uh, from those things, and by, and by the way, I, I should mention some of you will probably want to know: Are, are these things improving home value? And um, I I don't think that they are like a major factor in home value. 
Um, like we don't see s- some homes that have, you know, a few smart features selling for thousands more than homes that don't because people know that they can easily add those uh, smart home gadgets to their home for just a few hundred bucks. But I know for the clients that like that type of technology, when they go into a house that already has it, that is a selling feature for them. It's just one less thing that they have to, to up update once they come in it's one less expense and uh and it is something that they like and i haven't heard many people that are like um oh man i really wish that this home didn't have all this technology for the most part people are are pretty much on board with it i know not everyone cares uh you know with you know alexa and and the echo uh, and Echo Dots and all of those things. Not everyone cares for the fact that it's listening to you all the time. But the reality is our phones are listening to us all the time anyway. We kind of lost that fight uh, and lost that battle a while ago. And so for the most part, people are very positive when they see that the homes have been updated with, with smart home technology. Um, th- they are very much in favor of it. And also indicates that the that the owner, that the seller of the home has uh has done updates and has um invested in the home because the reality of the situation is a lot of people don't do a whole lot to their homes and so if you have someone that updated that 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 was willing to upgrade their thermostat that's a good sign that they probably did some other updates as well that they probably cared about their home to some extent um and so i think that that makes buyers uh feel more secure as well so i think it's more of a um, the type of thing that makes, like I said, makes buyers feel comfortable with the home and makes it to where it's like, okay, I want to put an offer in on this home, but doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to spend $5,000 more in order to get that home, if that makes sense. Um, these next two things, the last two things on my list, these aren't things that are, are fixtures in your home, but these are things that I just want to mention because I've worked with them, I've used them, I have them, and I would recommend them just practically. Um, One is the Fire Stick. Um, This is produced by Amazon, and I am a big fan of the Fire Stick. I've used Apple TV. Apple TV is good. It's really sleek. works very well, Um, and I am an Apple guy, Uh, okay? So um, the Fire Stick, I just think, is better. I use um, Amazon a lot, and of course, you can um, you can put your Apple account on the Fire Stick so that anything that you purchase through Apple still comes through. You know, if you purchase movies on Apple, you still can stream them on your Fire Stick. Um, and the Fire Stick has the nice functionality that you can go into. Um, programmer mode, for instance, uh, you know, some people know what the term jailbreaking is. Um, you can do stuff like that um, to uh, get some apps that maybe are not in the Amazon App Store, which opens up a whole new world depending on, you know, how geeky you are. I can be kind of, I have a geeky side, so that that can be kind of interesting for me. But the, uh, the Fire Stick is uh, really well done. Um, we get a ton of use out of it, and that's a simple way to upgrade your TV from a not smart TV into a smart TV. And honestly, I have smart TVs where I use the Fire Stick on it because I just prefer it. A lot of smart TVs out there, the smart TV technology is not good with them. The Fire Stick just gives me uniformity, allows me to have everything synchronized across all my TVs, and that way, I don't have to worry about, okay, you know, this Samsung and this TCL TV, they have two different interfaces and not, you know, we're logged in to different things. No, we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, and so I'm, I'm very bullish on, uh, on the Fire Stick. Another uh, thing that's fairly new technology that is a real game changer is the robot vacuum. And there's now a lot of different robot vacuums that are out there, and I've only interacted with a few of them, Um, but these things are great. I mean, they really make cleanup, particularly if you have kids or or animals in the house. It makes it so much simpler, Um, and I think the main thing that I've learned from them are, um, A, the battery life is really important. 
like the amount of square footage that it can hit in one run um, really makes or breaks the the vacuum itself. And um, the way these vacuums work is they just kind of bounce around the house and they kind of learn where all your furniture is. And once the battery gets low, um, after it's bounced around the house and sucked up a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of dirt and whatnot, it just goes back to the dock and it just resets itself. Um, now the good ones that are out there will com- will m- completely map out the house and let you just dis- let you see the map of the house, and then you can actually select specific areas that you want it to go to or deselect areas that you don't want it to go to. And I really like that feature. Um, I highly recommend making sure that your robot vacuum has that feature. Um, I would also strongly consider um, ones that have the ability to mop as well. I think that that, uh, the one that I currently have that I'm using does not have the mopping feature. And we have a separate one that's a, a cheaper one that will mop. But I think it's it's kind of cool having the all in one that it can uh, it can vacuum and it can mop. We have a lot of hardwoods in our home and a lot of uh, tile, and so um, that's something that uh, that really comes in handy and that helps to to keep the house clean. So we're not always sweeping, not always vacuuming, um, and that's something that uh, that I have gotten and my wife has gotten a lot of use out of over the years. So that's it. That is some smart home technology that uh, that you can utilize in your home, in your rentals, whatever the case may be. Um, there is so, and there's way more out there. I mean, I didn't even get into um, all these different hubs that are out there and whatnot. Um, there is a ton, a ton of technology. You can geek out as much as you want on any of that stuff. Um, I, I think it, it's all great. I think that we've, we're now seeing our homes become connected in a way that, um, you know, a few years ago just never even seemed possible. And uh, it's just really making the whole home experience just such a cleaner, more pleasant uh, experience technologically. Um, as always, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to uh, you can always leave those on the on the show itself. You know, leave us a rating or a review. But you can always reach out to me as well. Uh, shoot me a text, shoot me an email, give me a call, and let me know if you or anyone else that you know needs a realtor. 